All right. Well, my name is Aaron Berger, and I'm an extension educator with the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension, and I'm an educator in the Southwest Panhandle. And Dallas Mount is also on with us today. Dallas? Hi, I'm Dallas Mount with the University of Wyoming. And uh, Aaron and I are co-coordinators of the High Plains Ranch Practicum School that uh, takes place in southeast Wyoming and western Nebraska. And uh, we do an eight-day uh, ranch management course that runs June to January of the year. And uh, some of these presentations are supporting material for that. Well, one of the key things that we talk about in the ranch practicum is integrating nutrition, body condition score, and reproductive performance. Those are things that are tied together. We're going to show you uh, several different slides and information as we go through this, but I want to give credit where credit is due, and a lot of the information here that you're going to get to see is from uh, Don Adams and Aaron Stalker, as well as Rick Punston and Steve Paisley. Don, Aaron, and Rick are all extension specialists with the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension, and Steve Paisley is a CapCast specialist with the University of Wyoming. All right, let's get rolling. All right, well, as we think about areas of focus, as we think about a cow's nutrient requirements, we want to think about how her nutrient requirements are tied to milk production. That's really a key thing as we think about the whole cow's cycle through the year, really ties, about, ties in around calving and milk production. Second is we want to know that cow's body condition score. That body condition score at the time of calving and the way that condition score moves after calving is really critical to her being able to go ahead and rebreed which ties into our next point is looking at how do we optimize reproductive rates. And when I say optimize, we're not trying to get every cow bred, obviously, because if we're doing that, we're spending too much money. At the same token, we want to make sure that we're getting enough cows bred that we're affecting our cost of production numbers in a way that we're where we need to be. So when we think about the cow, obviously the cow is a unique animal compared to these other two that we've got here, our pig and our chicken. We need to think about what is that cow's competitive advantage to either a pork or poultry producer, and what can we do to take advantage of that. So obviously the cow's competitive advantage is she can take a low-quality forage and convert it into a tasty, high-quality product. And that's different, obviously, than when we think about our competitors. And really that cow's advantage revolves around the rumen. She's able to take low-quality forage. Uh, she has a symbiotic relationship with microbes in the rumen there. She provides an environment where they can break that down into a nutrition type product she can use and, and she provides the environment for them to do that in. So as we think about a cow's nutrient requirements and how she's going to really use what's available to her, first priority is going to be maintenance, second will be growth, third is milk production, and finally fourth is reproduction. So as we look at down how that happens, we need to pay attention to the fact that if we want to get that cow rebred, she needs to be in a state of nutrition that's going to allow that to happen. So if we think about a cow, we want to ask in terms of her production cycle through the year, where is she going in terms of what are her nutrient requirements going to be, and what does she need to get there? Does she have what's supplied in terms of maybe range? Is that adequate to get her where she needs to be? Or does she need some supplementation or perhaps even some substitution to meet her nutrient requirements. And Aaron, I think one question under here too, and, and maybe that's what you meant by some of this is, is what's her body condition score? Yeah. And, and what is she now and which way is she going? Is she on an increasing plane of nutrition? Is that her body condition score improving or is she currently losing weight? Is it a time of the year where maybe the forage isn't there to support her and she's going down? And then how does that couple with her needs, uh, like you just mentioned of, um, maintenance and, and reproduction in milk. Uh, but really, I think reproduction is one of the keys there. And if she's on an increasing plane of nutrition, her body condition scores are going up, then it's going to be much easier for her to get bred. Yeah. And we're going to talk about some things that we can do to affect cow body condition score. There's really a number of different things we can do. Everything from genetics to time of calving, time of weaning, uh, supplementation. There's a lot of different things we can do to manipulate that. And the important thing to remember is we want to think about how can we do that cost effectively. Okay, this is just an example of a cow's nutrient requirements, calving cow, and uh, looking at how her energy requirements change throughout the year. So we look at here at this chart on the left-hand side is she's just coming into weaning, and the left-hand side is those pounds of PDN. 
Obviously, as it goes up, that means she needs more energy. As we look at the bottom, that's months. So we think about maybe we wean that cap in October. That would be represented by the month 10. She's at her lowest nutrient requirements right after weaning. Um, she's just weaned her calf. She's not milking anymore. The calf that she's got within her is really small, so has a low level of nutrient requirements. And so she has really no low nutrient requirements during this time. As we move to the right, we can see she enters the last trimester there. Her nutrient requirements begin to creep up in terms of energy requirements. And then at the time of calving, boom, they really jump because that's when milk production enters in. And uh, really from the time of calving till about 45 days to 60 days post-calving is when her nutrient requirements are the highest in terms of energy. And once we get out to 80 days, obviously she needs to be rebreeding in order to stay on a 365-day calving schedule. And then obviously as her milk production begins to taper off, it drops down in terms of her nutrient requirements. And then we complete the cycle with weaning again. So that just kind of gives us a picture of what's going on with that cow in terms of energy requirements throughout the year. Anything to add there, Dallas? Oh, I don't think so. I guess one uh, quick thing to point out is look at the scale of these differences. So we're talking pounds of TDN, which is essentially equal to energy. That's the nutrient we're talking about. And uh, down here, we're at about nine units, somewhere in there at the bottom. And then at the top, we're up around 14. So that's the scale at which we're talking differences here. Uh, so manipulating where these things happen is one of the most powerful tools for controlling uh, cow body condition and, and really cost of adding nutrients to that cow or, or, or feeding. Good. This just shows the cow's requirements and the protein supply on a typical uh, Western Nebraska, Eastern Wyoming type range. Again, we look at the red line being the protein available in terms of what she's grazing. You can see in March there, we don't have much in terms of green grass. So her protein requirements are in excess of what's available out there in terms of the forage. We get into April and we got some real high quality grass starting to come on. We come into May and what's available actually has surpassed what her requirements are. And so what is available in terms of native range is in excess of what she needs. And then we follow that line out to October, November. Uh, they match pretty closely. We get in November, again, December, they're matched pretty closely. And once that cow, again, starts to enter that last trimester, especially the last 45 days, we see there's a gap there in terms of what's available, in terms of protein supplied, and what that cow's requirements are for herself and for that calf she's developing in utero. So we just look at, this is the same cow, but what if we moved her calving date to June from March? And again, now the red line is the protein supply. And the purple line is the cow's requirements. Well, we can see that her protein supplied by the native range is actually in excess of what she needs just prior to calving. And so it's in excess there. We get into July. Native range is starting to decrease in terms of quality, obviously. But those two lines really match pretty closely as we go on through the summer into the early fall and winter. And then when we get out to that February, March time frame, again, we see that what the range supplies in terms of protein available is actually leading what that cow needs. And so in this case, as we look at this, there's a period there in the fall, that September, October time frame, where maybe that cow is going to be a little protein deficient in terms of what the range supplies and what she needs. But in many ways, the protein supplied by the range is ahead of her requirements as we look at how that matches what's available with what she needs. That's pretty cool to look at even those months that we typically think about months needing supplementation, December, January, February, uh, it's matching up pretty closely in terms of protein available and, and what she needs. And again, this is from dry dormant grass, right? Yeah, this is dry dormant grass. And I also want to uh, mention here that obviously time of weaning is going to have an effect here. So if we're weaning those calves in uh, December, you know, maybe weaning them at six months of age, uh, that's obviously going to change versus if we left those calves on the cow we until maybe a February time frame or March. 